Hello, today we're going to be colouring in Venus and then also the inside of Venus as well. Um, I know I normally do like the moons and satellites and stuff, but I thought I'd change it up a little bit this time. Um, mainly because Venus doesn't have moons, so that would make it a bit tricky. Um, over here on the left is the colours I'm going to be using. If you want to use different colours, that's fine. Um, but here's the pens or pencils to have ready if you want to follow along with me. Um, oops. Venus is a like browny yellow colour, um, so I'm only going to be using like light browns. Okay, so let's start with the light brown. I'm just going to colour in this top bit. Ooh, see what's doing the lines? There we go. So the special thing about Venus, or, um, I'll leave this section white and then jump to this next section. Um, a brush bigger. The special thing about Venus uh, is. Well, Venus has two special things about it that's different from all the other planets. Um, one is Venus spins backwards compared with the other planets. Um, so you know how on Earth the sun rises in the east and sets in the west? On Venus, it rises in the west and sets in the east. Um, and so because of this, it means... So Venus still moves around the sun in the same direction as we do, but it just rotates uh, the opposite way. Um, so what this means is a day on Venus is almost as long as a year. I'm just going to move these edges a bit. Um, which yeah, is quite interesting, I think. Um, the other weird one is Uranus. Uranus spins sideways. Um, so basically, like what we think is like the top of uh, most planets, which would be like here, on Uranus, it's actually over here on the side. Um, so yeah. No one's exactly sure why um, Venus and Uranus both spin slightly differently. Um, the main idea, especially with Venus, um, is that maybe something big hit it and kind of like knocked it off. Um, it would have to be something really big, like say like the size of the moon or something. Um, but that's kind of like the uh, the most popular idea at the moment. Okay. Um, and then the other thing about Venus is Venus is the hottest planet in the solar system. You think it'd be Mercury because Mercury is the closest to the sun, um, but it's actually Venus, and that's because Venus has really thick clouds. Um, which is what we're colouring in. If you Google pictures of Venus, or if you've seen pictures of Venus before, um, you might see like two different pictures that are like almost like completely different. Uh, one looks a bit like what we're colouring in now, um, and the other one kind of looks like a bit orangey red and like looks or like almost like quite angry. Um, that's the the surface of Venus. So, yeah, most of the time when we see Venus, like if you had a telescope in your garden and you looked up and saw Venus, um, you'd be looking at the clouds. Um, we've managed to use satellites and stuff that have like uh, special equipment that can look through the clouds. Um, like kind of, uh, I don't think that's what to explain this. Uh, uh, the, if you kind of think of like, uh, like infrared cameras and stuff, how they can like uh, look at night. Um, some of the different ones, I can't remember if it is infrared or not, um, but they kind of have different ways to uh, look through the clouds. All right, I'm going to colour in this one, and then I'm going to do these two uh, much darker. Uh, I know that's kind of a vague way to explain it. Um, it's because it uses something called the electromagnetic spectrum, which is kind of quite a complicated thing to explain while I'm colouring in. Um, I kind of need like, lots of pictures and stuff. But I will do a future video on it at some point um, and explain it better. Okay. Um, so Venus is often referred to as Earth's twin um, because it's almost the same size. Let's switch for darker brown. Uh, it's almost the same size as Earth. It's about ninety percent the size, um, so it's only a little bit smaller. Um, and the other thing as well about Venus is how I said about. Um, it has like very thick clouds and stuff. 
uh, it's kind of when we look at Venus, we kind of maybe see our future if global warming gets really bad, um, because we think that Venus used to be a lot like Earth and had like water and stuff on it, um, but then because of volcanoes, um, there's a lot of like extra gases and stuff put into the atmosphere, and so what that meant is it kind of like acted like a blanket. Um, and traps all the heat in. So when the heat from the sun comes, it can't escape again because the clouds are too thick. So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of like, and we're seeing our atmosphere getting thicker. <clears throat> uh, we're seeing our atmosphere get thicker because of global warming. Um, so even though Venus, on the surface of Venus, it's about 460 degrees, I think. Um, it's very hot, so it's too hot for water. But there is still parts of Venus that could have life. Um, so although the surface is very hot, like if you think of like on Earth, how when we get higher up and higher up, like in a plane, it's really cold outside. Whereas on Venus, because it's so hot on the surface, when you get to say the height of a plane, um, it's actually about the right temperature for water. Um, so there's some ideas that maybe if there's life on Venus, it could be in the clouds. The problem with this, though, is, I mean, you know what a cloud is like? It's basically a big fluffy sponge thing that you can't really stand on or anything because it's all water. Um, so, like, if you couldn't have life like us on there because we're too heavy, we'd fall through the clouds. But maybe if you had, like, bacteria and stuff, it would maybe live in the clouds. So... And also, because if it's in the clouds, like I said, the, the clouds are so thick, um, it means they would get more sunlight if they're like higher up because there's less clouds, like they're closer to the edge of the planet kind of thing. Um, right, I will, since I've got my dark brown brush selected, I will do these other dark bits. Um, so you might see um, there's pictures and stuff out there of like people who kind of thought of like uh, airships and stuff like blimps and things that you could have on Venus um, to you know like make like a colony on Venus because it had to be like in the sky. Um, the other thing as well that Venus has is um, it has acid rain. Um, which we have on Earth, but it's kind of quite rare um, because it's very poisonous. Um, and it's basically when you have like uh, acid and stuff in the clouds and then, yeah, it rains down to Earth. Um, whereas because Venus has a lot of acid in its clouds, it gets it quite regularly. So again, like if we were to like, say, build like a base on Venus, one, it would have to protect us from the temperature and two, it would have to protect us from the acid. So it'll be very, very tough. All right, let's switch back to the light brush. Okay. So, um, the inside of Venus is kind of interesting. Um, so Venus has similar layers to what we have on Earth. So it has a core in the middle, um, the mantle and the crust. Um, so the mantle is basically lava, um, because that's what comes out of volcanoes. Um, and then the crust is like the dirt and stuff. Um, now we know uh, because Venus had volcanoes and stuff, we know it used to have plate tectonics and they would like move around. Um, if you don't know what plate tectonics are, um, I talked about them a little bit in the earth coloring video. Um, basically, the best way to think of them is as like a giant surfboard made out of dirt and rocks um, that are like the size of the continents and we have them here on earth. Um, so like there's, they roughly line up with continents um, because they're really big. Um, but not exactly. So, like, there's a, like one for North America, one for about Europe, um, Australia and New Zealand are on one, and there's like quite a few of these moving around the planet. Um, and they basically they move so slowly that we it's hard to notice them. So they move. It's something like a centimeter a year. It's very very slow, but they're like slowly creeping around the planet. Um, and what happens is 
when they meet, that's when you start to get problems. Um, so, like, if you have two going alongside each other, they'll, like, scrape against each other. Like, uh, if you imagine, like, two cars, like, trying to scrape past each other. Um, and this is when you get earthquakes. Um, and then the other one is when you have two that meet head on. Uh, they'll basically, what they'll do is they'll go flat and then push each other up. And this is when you get a volcano because then you get like a gap in between them and then the lava can squirt out. Um, and this is also how you get mountains made too. Um, this is how we got Everest um, and like all the mountains around there. Because what happens is they'll keep pushing, they'll keep pushing, keep pushing, they get higher and higher. And then all of a sudden one will slip and go underneath the other one. Um, so that's how we get mountains. So because Venus used to have volcanoes, how it got all of its uh, chemicals and stuff that are in the uh, atmosphere, um, we know it used to be geologically active, is what we call it, with these plate tectonics. Um, but the question is, we don't know if it still is or not. Because again, because of the clouds and stuff, it's kind of hard to see if these volcanoes are still going. So, um, right, I've got this one, I'll leave this one white, and then do this top bit. Um, and the reason why that's important is because plate tectonics, as they're kind of moving around, like I say, like when they like make volcanoes and stuff, one will go into the planet and be destroyed um, in the mantle. So it, you've got this cross, and it'll like sink into the mantle and be destroyed. But at the other end, you've got bits of it coming out, and it will bring all sorts of like new minerals and things out from under the surface of the Earth. Um, and this is kind of what helps keep the planet healthy. Because, um, again, uh, going back to volcanoes, um, if you live near a volcano, although it's very dangerous, the ground is very healthy for plants and stuff. And plants grow very easily um, because all the lava is full of like all the minerals and stuff that plants need to grow. So uh, by having like these plate tectonics moving around and like bringing up new parts of the planet and like destroying parts of it, um, it actually keeps the planet very healthy for life. Right, let's switch to a grey. Do the core. Um, if you don't have a grey pencil, you can just use a normal pencil. So the core of Venus is slightly different from the core of Earth. So in Earth, we have this basically big rock ball of iron. Um, and then outside of that, we have a second layer of the core, um, which is called the outer layer, um, or like the outer core, um, and it's liquid. Um, whereas we think Venus is all solid. Um, the reason why we think this is because, um, so the liquid part of the Earth's core, as it's moving around, as the Earth's rotating, um, it makes a magnetic field for the planet. Um, so obviously we can't see a magnetic field, um, but we know it's there. Uh, whereas Venus does not have a magnetic field at all. Um, or if it does, it's very, very like weak. Um, and there's two ideas as to why Venus doesn't have a magnetic field. Um, switch the orange while I color in the mantle. Um, the two ideas are either the whole planet, the whole center of the planet is solid, so it doesn't have this liquid material moving around like Earth does, like this all sloshing around and making a magnetic field. Um, and the other idea is that Venus, because it rotates backwards, is moving so slowly that the material doesn't move, um, or it doesn't move fast enough to make a magnetic field for the planet. Ooh, kind of come out the lines a bit, it's fine. <laughs> um, so that's how we know, because although we can't see to the center of Venus, um, that's kind of how we, that's the two main ideas. Um, and it's something I quite admire with like scientists and stuff is how they have such limited information, but yet they can still like figure these things out. So although we can't like dig down to the center of Venus, um, you can still kind of figure it, things out. Um, well, it's not to say that we've dug to the center of the earth either. Um, although how we know what's at the center of the Earth is very, very complicated. Um, and it's to do with how earthquakes move. Um, but again, that's like a, it's enough uh, for like a whole separate video on its own talking about how we know what's at the center of the Earth. 
Uh, spoilers, it's not dinosaurs, I'm afraid. Right, I'm going to switch back to the light brown. Let's do the outside. Um, so if you've ever tried looking for Venus, Venus is quite hard to see, like, um, at night. Because it's towards, because it's closer to the sun, um, it's normally only visible at, like, sunrise or sunset. Uh, sometimes it's visible a few other times, but again, it moves very fast. So like, if you're trying to point a telescope at it, it can be quite tricky sometimes because it just moves so fast. Um, but if you're ever, like, say, out in the car at sunrise and you see, like, a really bright star near the sun, it's probably Venus. It might be Mercury, but it's probably Venus. Um, so let's have a look out for it. Alright, we're almost done colouring in the planet, and then we're colouring the title and the background. So, since Venus is uh, browns, I'm going to stick with my browns for this, I think. Ooh, I'm not very good at staying on the lines today. Um, right, let's switch to the dark brown. Okay. So yeah, so Venus and Mercury um, are the only two planets that don't have moons. Um, all the others do. Some have a lot more, like Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, Jupiter has, I think it's 70 something, and uh, Saturn has 80 something, I think. It's a lot anyway. Um, especially compared with Venus and Mercury that have none. Um, okay. Brush a little bit smaller. Oh, that's very small, but I think, yeah, there you go, made it work. So, uh, we've sent a few satellites and stuff uh, to Venus. Uh, right, switch to black, black color in the background. Um, we've sent a few satellites and stuff. Again, though, the problem is with the, like, if, especially if you want to land like a rover on the surface of Venus, um, it has to be able to deal with like such high temperatures um, and pressure because there's so much uh, atmosphere. Um, and then also like the acid and stuff. Um, so, for the people that are building it, like NASA and things, um, it's a real, real challenge. But they've managed to do it a few times. Um, so you can, like, if you look online, you can Google and see, like, pictures of Venus and stuff, like the surface of Venus. Um... I mean, Mars is the one everyone kind of talks about because it's where we're constantly sending things uh, since it's the closest planet. Oh, um, this isn't really related to Venus, um, but I've been at a virtual conference this week, um, which is kind of where people meet up, normally in person, um, and talk about kind of what the latest developments are in like a specific part of science. Um, and the one this week was for a telescope called the Vera Rubin Observatory that's in Chile. It's just being built. Um, I think it's supposed to be finished at the end of this year, but obviously... Uh, with current uh, global climate, um, things are a bit different. Uh, so it's probably going to launch next year. Um, 
And the really interesting thing about it is they're trying to aim to take uh, the biggest survey um, of the Southern Hemisphere. So by a survey, again, if you think of like a normal survey where someone walks around with a clipboard asking questions, um, it's kind of the same thing, but in space and with photos. Um, so they're trying to take lots and lots of photos. Um, the thing that's really impressive, so the, the people that were running it were talking about the camera and stuff. They think it's the most powerful camera that's ever been used in a telescope on Earth. Um, I think some of the satellites have more powerful cameras. Um, but this one, it has a 3.2 billion pixel camera. Um, so most of your, most phones and stuff, I think at the moment are about, what are they like 10 megapixels, I think, or 15 megapixels. Um, so uh, a megapixel is a million pixels. Um, so this telescope's camera will be about a thousand times more powerful than your phone. Um, so it's very, very high quality pictures. Um, and they're aiming to take, it's something like 10 million pics, uh, pictures a night. So there'll be lots and lots of pictures. And the one I find really impressive is what they're going to do is they're going to try and get every picture from the telescope in Chile to America to then distribute to anywhere in the world within 60 seconds. I find that so impressive. Um, but uh, this telescope is what I'm going to be working with um, as part of my PhD, and I kind of have been a little bit so far already. Um, and I'm using it to look at uh, supernova exploding stars. Um, because, like I say, it's trying to take a really, like, basically cover the entire uh, southern hemisphere sky uh, with pictures. Take lots and lots of them. So what it means for, like, what I'm doing um, is it'll take lots and lots of pictures of different supernova. So it means I'll have lots and lots of different ones to work with. Ooh, my pen stopped working. There we go. Ooh, and again. Um, the other thing as well, in space news, um, you may have seen uh, NASA's newest rover to Mars was recent, recently launched, um, called Perseverance. Um, launched end of July, I think. I think I might have talked about it a little bit in the Earth video. Um, but what I didn't know as well is China have also launched um, their own Mars rover about the same time. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, I think it's called like Tianwen, Tianwen 1, I think it's called. Um, and it's a uh, like whereas NASA their one Perseverance is basically a rover that's just going to sit on the planet and drive around and stuff um, the one from China is a rover and a satellite so basically when the rover is driving around the planet it has a satellite in space it can talk to it at the same time Ooh, a little bit close to that okay right as always, I'm just going around these titles so they can still be kind of clear. Um, but if you're doing this with like a like normal pencil, you can just like shade lightly around it or something. Um, so yeah, these conferences and stuff. Oh. There we go. My pen's being slow today. It's fine. Um, these conferences and stuff are quite interesting because everyone's kind of like, when we're kind of working, we're all like very separate um, and like kind of doing our own things. 
And it's kind of nice that these conferences kind of come together and you can see what other people have been working on. Um, even if it's not related at all to what you're doing, it can be quite interesting seeing what people are working on. Um, and then sometimes, you know, you might meet some people who work on something similar and you'd be like, oh, that sounds really cool. Can I get involved? Um, and then next thing you know, you, you've got a new team to work with. Um, especially as like a PhD student, it's really helpful um, because I like I don't know many people in astronomy yet. Um, so it's a good way for me to meet people. Right, we are almost done. Right, let's switch to yellow. Let's do the stars. Oh, I'm going to brush a little bit smaller. So, as always, I'm just doing some random dots. Try not to do them in the grid. I want them to look quite random. Although I normally end up doing them in the grid by accident. Uh, let's put one up here. Let's put one in the E. There you go. Mm, put one there. Cool. Right, I think I'm happy with how that looks. So anyway, that's Venus. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, as usual, um, the download sheets are in the description linked. Um, they go to a Dropbox folder so you can download them there if you don't have them already. Because um, there's not, not only is there Venus, there's a bunch of others. I'm working my way through the solar system. Um, so yeah, feel free to check that out if you want some more colouring to do. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.